Deutschland nach Haus. Wir bitten Sie, Ihren Kabinenkommando dafür vorgesehenen Gedeckungen unterzubringen. Guess where I am. So that was fun. Um, it's about basically Isabel Per's character, character, character in Korea. Just like she's a very lost French woman who ends up teaching French to Koreans and living with a Korean man like for free. And it's basically about a day in her life as she goes from client to client and eats and day drinks and lies down and has a nap in the park and yeah it was so funny like at first i didn't know if it was intentional there's definitely a thing about like language and like not necessarily being your best self in the second language because most of the movie is in english and none of the characters have english as a first language so there's that then i watched a movie with a supremely long title let me read it to you chronique fidèle survenue au siècle dernier à l'hôpital psychiatrique blit à joinville au temps où le docteur france fanon était chef de la 5e division entre 1953 et 1956 <laughs> and that's so funny because the director was at the screening and when asked why um, his title was this long he was like Je pas pu faire plus court. there was no other way to make it shorter so that was funny. This one, I thought it was a documentary, but even though its sources are documentary, like it's based on the writings of Franz Fanon and the writings of the patient of the psychiatric ward he was in in Algeria in the 50s, I it was more like a fictionalized retelling and uh, like docufiction. I don't know, it was a bit slow at times. I thought the acting of the main characters wasn't as good as the acting of people who played the patients and the, the Algerian staff. I thought they were more lifelike in their acting, um, but it was really interesting to see how his psychiatric work interacted and intersected with his anti-colonial work. So I have not read Fanon yet, so it's definitely given me a taste. Uh, maybe I'll borrow The Wretched of the Earth from a friend or something. And finally, I saw a Norwegian movie called Sex, which is about two chimney sweepers who are like heterosexual men in like marriages with kids and who start questioning their sexuality and their gender. And you think you know what kind of movie you're gonna see when I tell you that synopsis, but it's not that kind of movie. It's so interesting. First of all, there are a lot, the music is so fascinating. It's very jazzy. Like it's so, I loved it. And it's also very talky. It's mostly conversations between the two chimney sweepers, them and their wife, them and their children. And it's like very introspective and like, it's not surface level or it's not sensational look at being basically a middle-aged man who doesn't know what your sexuality is or is questioning his identity and it's so good and it, there's this like i loved it and i saw it in this absolutely gorgeous theater which had like these blue drapes and the neon uh, red neon lights on the sides and it smelled so good there was a cafe attached to the theater and it smelled like coffee throughout the whole screening chips kits and then like right next to this theater there was a korean fried chicken stand so of course i had to get 
fried chicken. And then we eat that with my brother and his girlfriend and we're like so full. But yeah, that was my first day. Right now, I'm logged onto the platform. I'm waiting for 10 a.m. to arrive in three minutes. And hopefully I can get my skin enough eyes on the TV look like I really want to see this TV. Okay, I got my ticket for I saw the TV glow. See you on the streets. Hi. Um, um this is so hard. I'm going to like get up outside. Yesterday I went it's so hard to vlog outside. just off of Karl Marx Alley. Uh, I'm trying to find a relatively quiet and without too much passage space to film because uh, vlogging in public is still kind of cringe for me. Like, this is very cringe. Okay, let's recap the movies that I saw since we last spoke. I saw Direct Action, which is a French documentary that's like three hours and 36 minutes long about the ZAD, which is like basically a squat that was started to prevent the building of an airport in the west of France. And honestly, as much as like the actual three hours and 30 minutes were kind of excruciating and long and like so many of the shots in the movie were like 10 minutes long static shots. I think by the end of it, I really ended up appreciating what it meant. Like, even if it felt gimmicky at first, I think it really did work to make the essence of the Zad quite, um, quite like obvious. And I finally understood it because I think even among leftist circles, the idea of a Zad is still like very fringe and kind of a joke at times and this made it very serious to me and made me realize that I that like it's a political ideal that's attainable and super interesting in practice and after that also I loved that during the movie there was an intermission and during the intermission like people stood up and like went out to eat or drink and pee and stuff and it was like it made things more alive and it felt like it actually connected with the spirit of the movie of the Zad of like communal living and it broke like the kind of decorum that can exist in the festival screenings I think sometimes okay uh, okay um, then I the next day I went to see a short film program which was K plus which is like quite young and there was a school group there at first I was like oh that's going to be interesting to see like how the kids react to these like shorts that are sometimes art house and international but then it turned out I was with some of the worst preteens I've ever met in my life like they were so rude and loud and like disruptive I was actually shocked because I have this whole idea of like um German kids being like quiet and good kids and so yeah that was kind of annoying and there were five short films I didn't okay mm, I really liked Papillon which is a French short film animated that's um, paint on glass animation which is insane and it's about the story of a swimmer who was 
of a swimmer in the 20th century who was taken by, um, like, uh, he was Jewish, and so he was taken by the occupation to go into a concentration camp, but he survived. And so that was super beautiful, and I thought the medium of the story was, like, someone is looking at me. <laughs> and I thought the medium of the story was, like, so um, adequate to tell the story of swimming and a life lived in water and a life, like, combating oppression. <sighs> So that was a highlight of the short film program. The other ones, I think, because they're for a young audience, were less interesting to me, less layered, and a lot, like, a lot of them had open endings, which is, I don't know, I'm not a big fan of open endings. Wait. Um, yeah, so that's what I did. And then, at night, like in the evening, I saw Black Tea, which is like this multi-international production from like Ivory Coast and Taiwan and like France and Luxembourg, which should have been good and really wasn't. I was so disappointed. I think that's my biggest disappointment of the festival so far because I was expecting like a story about like African communities in China and like a story of love centered around tea and really to find those like romantic and like sensual elements but I was so disappointed like the story was so disjointed and didn't know what it wanted to be didn't feel like authentic or anything like that so yeah I it was so disappointing and yeah I wish it was good but it wasn't and then this morning, I went to see a another. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And then this morning. <laughs> oh my god. Um, and then this morning, I went to see another short film program, but this time fourteen plus. There were short. There were four short films, and I think I enjoyed them a lot more. And also the crowd was a lot more pleasant because it was teenagers, like high schoolers, which confirms my theories that middle schoolers are actually the worst. And like, there was like this Brazilian film about uh, two teenagers falling in love in um, um, commu during community service. Um, there was, I mean, I like three of the movies and then one of them was quite experimental and I expected more of a mystery or a detective story and that's not what it was. So once again, I got tripped up by my expectations. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what it is for today. This evening, I'm also going to see another documentary. I have high hopes for this one. Tomorrow, I'm finally seeing I saw the TV Glow. And yeah, it's going to go by so fast. I'm hoping to maybe party a bit. Like, should I really be going to Berlin without doing the nightlife? No. So yeah, I'll keep you updated on that. I don't think I can film in a club, but I'll let you know. Okay. This is... I've done enough. Bye. <laughs>